Hi, my name's Jim. Uh, I'm going to do a little quick. It's not so much as a how-to as it is a you-can-do video because it's really quite easily done. Um, what I did yesterday was I decided to sit down and build a uh, loop antenna for uh, for advanced AM broadcast reception or weak signal reception. Why did I do this? I was involved in a discussion on a Usenet group about portable radios and antennas and and overloading these small radios with very long wire antennas which is easily done um, and something you want to avoid because it makes radio totally useless at that point and I realized you know I had enough scrap laying around to go ahead and actually build this thing real quickly it took me about five hours uh, the antennas built with a length of wire the length I'm not quite sure how much wire I used uh, because basically I did just build it off the top of my head no plans just went ahead and did it uh, that's the second one I've built the first one actually was about 20 years ago uh, this one uh, I just kind of uh, threw some wire together and uh, strung the antenna together just to prove a fact that it's not that critical and uh, that was part of the discussion this is not all that critical uh, this particular antenna is composed of 20 turns of uh, wire the gauge is unimportant uh, I believe this is 18 gauge it could have been anything doesn't matter uh, as long as your frame will support it. There are 20 turns. Uh, I started out by gluing the frame together. Uh, the frame is just some dowels, a uh, little chiseling, little Dremel tool. Drove a screw through the center and then applied some epoxy, let it set up overnight and glued it together. Uh, then I took a Dremel tool and I cut the 20 slots into the uh, into the dowel rods. They're spaced exactly, well exactly, nothing's exact on this antenna. They're spaced basically a half inch apart. Uh, and there are 20 of these slots. So I started winding from the interior. Uh, take the spool of wire and just begin winding outward. As I said, it is a spiral, so it just kept increasing till we get to the final uh, to the final wind on it. And then there's a set of holes down at the bottom where I threaded the wire back and forward through them in order to hold it in place. There's nothing holding the wire other than its own. Uh, friction against the uh, dowel rods itself. Uh, there is one external loop which is totally separate from the rest of the loops. The rest of the antenna was slotted together as I said. Uh, these slots hold the wire. Uh, the external loop, the single turn external loop, is drilled into the dowels uh, and uh, it serves a uh, function of, you know, I'll explain the function in a little while. It's basically a pickup coil or a sensing coil. Uh, this antenna operates as a tuned circuit. Uh, after the spirals wound, the two uh, ends of the spiral feed this variable capacitor, which can be picked up uh, on eBay. They're basically junk at this point. Uh, they're expensive junk, but they're junk um, because they're very old pieces of equipment used in amateur radio and uh, old AM receivers, etc., etc. This one was used, I think it's about $10. Uh, it's in nice shape. Uh, in the back, there is a... Uh, block connector back here or standoff connector um, the uh, one single turn external loop is actually hooked to that it's a continuous loop and its two ends are brought into that block here's the way it works uh, your, your general uh, it is daytime so we're going to have to use a local station as our uh, as our uh, you know what's the word I'm looking for here is our demonstration station. So let's tune to a local station that I know is active right now. It's 550 kilohertz WKRC AM. Okay, the radio I'm using at this moment is a Sony, a Sony uh, 7600GR digital radio. It's an under $200 portable. It was right around $180. Uh, bought this radio some time ago. Uh, right now the sensitivity of the front end is turned all the way down, otherwise that station would be quite easy to hear because it is a 5,000 watt station. It's no more than a couple miles from me, but we've turned the sensitivity all the way down. Okay, there are two ways to use this antenna. First, there is ab absolutely no connection between the radio and the antenna at this moment. The antenna is out of tune, it's not on frequency, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tune this down. As I turn the capacitor counterclockwise, I add more capacitance to the system and effectively electrically lengthen it by doing so. So, notice as we get there, there. 
Look at that. There is no physical connection between the radio and the antenna. It's being inductively coupled through its own AM loop at this point. Uh, the internal ferret bar is coupling to the uh, coupling to the uh, antenna. Um, there is absolutely no physical connection. Now the other way that it can be done on this particular antenna, I decided to add an external jack which explains that single turn of wire, that turn of wire uh, on the outside of the other turns of wire. Uh, it simply it simply twists around on the outside of the other turns of wire and it acts as a sensing coil. It inductively couples to them. Uh, it will fit the antenna jack on this particular radio. That's in there. Now, the radio is, in a sense, physically coupled to the antenna at this point. Uh, everything else is still the same, but now I do have a physical connection. Uh, the purpose of the physical connection is this. Watch. No matter which way I turn this radio at this point, reception is good. I can move it any direction I want to. If I unplug that antenna, proximity to the antenna plays a role. Uh, also, the radio's internal ferret bar is still receiving, which can cause uh, signal fade and all kinds of other problems. It, it basically interferes with the directional pattern of the antenna. Uh, the antenna does have a directional pattern. Uh, the pattern is off the two ends. Uh, it's not actually off the front and back like one might think. It's off the two ends. So right now, my receive pattern is north, west, and southeast. Um, this antenna does a very good job at pulling weak stations, uh, weak stations out of the noise. Uh, it also, uh, as opposed to just tuning in on the primary station you want, it also reduces the input level of everything off to both sides of it. And uh, that can be more important than actually bringing up the signal you want, is getting rid of the signals you don't want. Uh, pretty easy to build, took five hours, uh, no issue. Um, as I, as I said, I threw it together from uh, from just my imagination really quickly. Uh, if you do have any questions, you need any help, uh, this antenna can, you know, it can be cut for other bandwidths uh, or for other frequencies. It's quite easy to make it work on any frequency you choose. So if you do have any questions, drop me an email. Email address is Jim A. Whitaker, that's J-I-M-A-W-H-I-T-A-K-E-R at gmail.com. Uh, it's all run together as one word. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them for you, and uh, hey, good luck. And like I said, if you're a shortwave listener, it's easy to make this work on shortwave. You just reduce the number of uh, number of turns on the coil. Uh, if you're a long wave listener, uh, which is frequencies lower than the AM broadcast band, add turns to the coil. Uh, it's not that difficult. It's best to start out by overdoing it. So. Um, because it's easier to remove wire than it is to add wire later, so it's always better to overdo it. So if you do have questions, once again, just drop me that email, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks.